From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the Tom Mikey Show. Hello. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. The uh, following story appeared in the Los Angeles Times. And, uh, of course, it's the usual... uh, (laughs) It's the usual female rhetoric. I have not seen a photograph of the woman who wrote this piece. My guess, and I'm just guessing and I could be wrong, my guess is that she's a 3F girl. And that's why she's so upset about what she uh, talks about in this piece. You know what the 3F girls are, right? They're the fat and fugly fives. That's right. Oh, yeah. And the Fat and Fugly Fives generally, to put another F in there, they generally specialize in FUPA. Get enough alliteration in there. So uh, here's the piece. You can pretty much imagine, as I am imagining, I don't know this for a fact, but I am imagining that that's what this woman looks like. Here's the piece. The title of the piece was, Ranch is Rebranded as Confidence. The subhead says, many women during spring break seem to believe that their sexuality is their only currency. When you got it, flaunt it, as Braniff once said. It's Braniff Airlines. Look it up. When you got it, flaunt it. Uh, women uh, use their sexuality because that's the currency that uh, people like to trade in the most. Kind of like the euro. It's the uh, currency people like the most. If you're out of euros, then you'll spend dollars. But, you know, people don't want dollars as much as they want euros. And the same thing with women and their sexuality. You know, if a woman is not hot, not sexual, then uh, I guess she has to use her brains or develop some intellect. But if you've got sexuality, what do you need that for? You don't. Here's the piece. This month, millions of young people have congregated on sunny beaches as far from home as possible in order to relieve themselves from the stresses of academia. Their methods... Around-the-clock binge drinking and lively cultural activities such as near-naked girl-against-girl wrestling matches held in giant vats of pudding. Sign me up. The Fort Lauderdale version of Spring Break was originally made famous by the 1960 film Where the Boys Are. Does the author remember that movie? The 1960 film Where the Boys Are. But spring break is now thought to be best experienced in places like Cancun, Mexico, where the drinking age is 18, and tour companies build packages almost exclusively around access to alcohol. $100 procures a wristband that grants admission to clubs offering unlimited free alcohol. We ought to do this, Gary. Oh, I think we just did. There were no pudding um, wrestling matches. <laughs> Meanwhile, this piece goes on to say, in news of the no duh variety, the American Medical Association released figures about sex and alcohol use during rowdy spring break vacations. 
The poll, which surveyed female college students and graduates aged 17 to 35, found that 74% believed women used drinking, quote, as an excuse for outrageous behavior. 83%, quote, had friends who drank the majority of nights while on spring break. And 12% felt forced or pressured into sex during spring break. By the way, why do you lump those together? Force is illegal. Pressuring somebody into sex, legal. Okay? Big difference. If I say, if you love me, you'll have sex with me, that's legal. If I pin you up against the wall and cut your jeans off with a scissor and then introduce myself to you uh, more forcefully, uh, a crime, and I deserve to go to prison forever for that. But they're not one and the same, and they shouldn't be lumped together in a survey. But when you can't make the numbers work in a survey, that, that's like when they make laws on Capitol Hill, and they always love to throw in child pornography into whatever the law is. We're trying to protect the children. In the process, they, they get Playboy magazine taken off the news set. Says here, the Journal of American College Health has reported that women partying at spring break hotspots consume an average of 10 alcoholic drinks per day. And men consume an average of 18. Queasy yet? She says, I know I am. Gary, you queasy? Not at all. Eighteen. Sometimes we've done eighteen by seven o'clock. We're just getting warmed up. We get applause from Dean down the hall. Says here a few years ago, says the writer, I went to Cancun during spring break to research a magazine article. I was hoping to arrive at some grand psychological and existential reason as to why many of today's college women who after all, were presumably pursuing higher education because they wanted to be more than sex objects, seemed so happy to let men lick tequila shots off their body parts. I didn't exactly succeed, but after a week of talking to people in various states of undress and intoxication, I can tell you this much. What's happening on spring break beaches isn't just boys being boys and girls going wild. It's young people, women especially, deciding that the way to measure their readiness for the adult world is not in terms of education or emotional maturity, but sexual desirability. Very nice. I'm all in favor. Because, let's face it, the more sexually desirable a woman is, uh, the better financially off she could very well be. And your sexuality is important. Says here, the raunchy contests and general debauchery were something that these women had prepared for, almost as though for a final exam. They had logged hours at the gym, in tanning booths, and at body wax salons. They would saved up money for breast implants and then timed the surgery so they'd be healed by spring break. Some seemed to have practiced drinking, experimenting with different alcohol combinations to see what afforded the fastest buzz with the least amount of calories and dollars spent. Almost like 101, for God's sake. I like that. It says here, one word I heard again and again, oddly, was confidence. As they psyched themselves up for wet t-shirt contests or debated whether a given guy was worth flirting with, a lot of women told me that they saw spring break as the proving ground for their attractiveness. <laughs> I love this. One woman said, if I can be considered hot here, I'll be hot anywhere. That was according to what was termed here as a rather morose woman sitting on a bar stool in a bikini and high heels. She said, I'm here to get confident. <laughs> God damn, I love this. While the fugly fatties like, uh, like Leslie Bennett are out there writing books about how women should be more demanding and more feminist, this is where women are really going. And when nobody's buying that book by Leslie Bennett, by the way, the sales figure is horrible, horrible, horrible. The one about uh, bossing your husband around, nagging him, taking sex away, making him do chores around the house. Yeah. But um, your average young woman today is not a feminist. 
She's figuring out how to please men like us. And that's a good idea, because, ladies, if you don't please us, we'll kick you the hell out. Just be aware of that. It says here, that's sad, but it's not exactly irrational given the context. No one was there, after all, to participate in a chess tournament. But the more women I talk... I imagine a woman in a chess tournament. Yeah, right. But the more women I talked to, the more it became clear that hotness was, for them, the largest factor in the equation of their self-worth. Here. If you're not hot, you're just not worth as much as someone who is, ladies. When they talked about what they wanted to do with their life, they spoke not of jobs or grad school, but of looking good, of having the right equipment and experience to ensure a place in the raunch-obsessed pop culture they'd come to see as the real world. I got news for you, sweetheart. This is the real world. Writing for a newspaper about all the hot chicks uh, practicing their hotness, that's not the real world. Those girls are living the real world, and you are there chronicling it and clearly wistful and upset about it. She says, these days, mini skirts the size of cocktail napkins are considered appropriate mall attire for 14-year-olds. Local newscasters seem to regard see-through shirts as proper on-air attire. Mia Lee, she's not talking about you, I'm sure. And illiteracy appears to have spread to the point at which parents can put a T-shirt on a two-year-old without noticing that the words future Hooters girl are printed across the front. <laughs> I like that. Very nice. With girl power like that, can we really blame these women for seeing their sexuality as their only currency? Of course, despite the fact that an estimated 170,000 kids are expected to descend on Cancun when the season is over, there are many more who have better things to do than pass out on the beer-stained floor of Congo Bongo. Yeah, but they don't have any hotness to sell. Yeah. But every spring when the spring drinking statistics get trotted out like so many vodka shots lined up at a bar, I'm reminded of how much they reveal about everyday life. Revelers may tell themselves that whatever happens in Cancun stays in Cancun, but in some ways the party never ends. She says, I'm feeling less confident already. So there you go. Now, does anybody agree with the writers? Does anybody think there is a problem with women measuring their self-worth and their sexuality? They're just being honest. They're just being realistic. Women who, who, who think that their self-worth is tied to their sexuality, they're, they're probably right. The hotter you are, the, the more people will like you, the more money you will make, the more experiences you will have in life. If you're a fat and fugly five, you may be walking around with a lot of sass and confidence, but the reality is hot chicks go to Costa Rica on vacation, Fat and Fugly Fives go to Costa Mesa on vacation. It's just that simple, right? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. All women are not so bad. I didn't say all women are, but uh, an awful lot of them are. And the bottom line is, this way you're free to do what or whoever you want. Wow, are you serious? That's right. Are you married or No, I'm not. Oh, my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. My 1-800-5800-TOM. Read your story. By uh, somebody who clearly has a feminist agenda. Writing for the Los Angeles Times. That's my view. Complaining about all the women testing out their sexuality in Cancun for spring break. Is this a problem? Women worried about how hot they are? Is that a problem? I'll talk to men and women equally here. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Jackie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jackie. First time, long time. Yes, dear. I totally agree with you on what your subject is regarding women having to dress up and be sexy and hot. Um, I totally want to thank you for stepping up as a father to all these men out there who unfortunately have no good role models. Somebody's got to do it. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, there's only one man doing it, and I wish there was more of you. I have my 15-year-old son listening to you often. I 
talk to all my girlfriends, all my associates, all my guy friends, and I tell them that they should listen to you, that you have a lot to say, and it's just to build up everybody's own self-esteem. I don't understand what the problem is when everybody wants to argue with you. You know, it makes a woman feel great when they look beautiful. And uh, the only women who are upset about women showing off their hotness are women who are not hot. And unfortunately, they can fix that. You know, they can fix that on their own. They can work out. They can go and educate themselves and get better jobs. There's nothing that you haven't told them that they can't do. You well, know? but uh, many of these women, uh, the Leslie Bennett's of the world, apparently don't want to do those things. And that is an unfortunate thing because, you know, they're going to remain feeling sad. They're going to remain feeling angry. And so will the men. You know, you always teach them to go to school. You always teach them the right roles. You always teach them about finances. I think you're doing a fantastic job, and I love you, Tom. I love you so much. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Good night. Appreciate the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Dave is listening to our online stream in San Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dave. I'm doing okay. Uh, uh, well, good. Um, I just wanted to let you know, um, I was just down in Cancun, uh, you know, less than a year ago. And I tell you, the women, they, they get down there and all of a sudden all their inhibitions, you know, uh, get off, get off and they, they just, they take it all off. It's not about, you know, wet t-shirt concerts or contests, you know, contests, excuse me. But, I mean, they get into wet body contests, you know. It's 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 like, you know, they get wet, they get naked, and they get crazy, and they just want to have a good time. So, I, you know, me personally, I'm 32 years old, so I'm not the, you know, a spring chicken or anything. But, you know, I I, I just think that, you know, they, they like to flaunt if they've got it. They don't want to flaunt it. Now, uh, when you were down there during spring break, did you put the puck in the net, Dave? Did you uh, nail any of that? Oh, hell yeah. And, and I didn't even go in, uh, off in spring break. I was down there in September, you know, and I I went on the tours and all the other kind of crap and stuff, and, you know, the cheats and eats and all that stuff. But, you know, they were still wild and crazy even that time of year. So, I mean, it's like, you know, women want to get off and get crazy, that's fine with me. You know, it's just more for me to reap the benefits. That's fine for every guy out there. We love it. And thank God women are worried about what we think. I'll tell you what, I'm thrilled about that. And I'll tell you. It, I wanna, it, by the way, a general message to the ladies out there, you could stand to lose a few pounds. <laughs> i tell you what, you know, I, I, I reaped all the benefits while I was down there. It was an awesome trip. I'm ready to go myself. You should. I mean, I, I, I and also just, I, I just spent, uh, you know, spring break down here in, uh, in in Rio de Janeiro, you know, and they got even twice as crazy down there. Is that so? Yeah. I mean, it is really awesome. The women are just, they're vipers when you go down there. It's 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 so awesome. So, uh, you know, I highly recommend both those trips. Well, thank you so much for that, Dave. I appreciate the call. I really do. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's go to Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Tom? Yes. It's me, okay? I know. <laughs> What's the matter, Jennifer? You don't understand. No, I don't. I've talked to you for 19 seconds. I don't understand. Um, 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 it's me. I know. You said that already. You don't remember? No. I went to school with your nephew. You went I'm to tired of these of my classmates coming after me. Okay. You went to school with my nephew. JP. Okay, they were coming. What is my nephew's name, dear? And they're blackmailing each other, us I apart see. and stuff. Uh, okay? Just tell me. Tell I'm me. Tired of going through it. Okay. Tell me my nephew's name, sweetheart. Ronald Terry. 
Nickname JV Lebeau. That is not my nephew. Well, somebody, I don't know. Oh, it's somebody you don't know. What, what made you think they were my nephew? I don't know. I've been like... Insane? Not insane. I mean, some people were coming after me, doing things to me. Really? So, do you really... do you hear voices? No. Well, how do you know they're coming after you? <sighs> My mother... Who's that? I don't know, Nancy. You don't know my nephew. And I don't know you. I thought you did. Well, I don't know. Why would I know you? I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I've been secretly been attacked and manipulated and pushed in a circumstance because they're trying to kill me or something. My dear, you need to see a mental health professional immediately. I mean now. I'm not crazy. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I think it would be a good idea uh, to run this past a therapist just to make sure. therapist uh darling i go to therapy myself so uh it's not just for uh uh it's not just for crazy people like me it's also good for people like you i'm just saying that everybody victimizing me well that's why i think you should go to see a therapist here and if you want uh, we will hook you up with the mental health department of L.A. County, and we will get you in touch with somebody uh, that you can see for a reasonable price or maybe even free. <laughs> Are you ready to do that? I really don't need a therapist. I need people to stop coming after me and attacking me. You don't understand this. No, you don't understand, dear. You are paranoid. I am not. These people are slick. They're stalking me, and they're getting in my life to sabotage me. Yes, I know. Uh, have you called 911? Have you told the police? I'm afraid to, okay? Why is that? <laughs> I don't want to be killed. Uh -huh. And why would anyone want to kill you? Because I'm, I'm a witness to the way my mother really was. You're a witness to what? The way my mom really was. And how um, how was your mom really? She's an abuser and a neglector. <laughs> I'm tired of covering for her. All right, dear, you need, uh, seriously, and, and we will help you, you need to see a mental health professional. I don't, I already did. They said I'm normal and they even told me to get away from my mom. <laughs> There, it says here on the screen, you're 31 years old. How, why haven't you gotten away from your mom at 31? Because I've been secretly held hostage well, by it, everybody. So if you're being secretly held hostage, how are you able to call the radio show? Because there's, um, I broke away finally, okay? All right, and you're hiding somewhere? Yes, I don't. I'm in a place where I know no one can break in now. <laughs> Dear, you you need to see a therapist. <laughs> I'm serious. You... I already did. The day you said I'm fine. Well, uh, how about you let us uh, help you find somebody else just to get a second opinion? Fine. All right, hold on. Dean is going to help you. Hold on. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. She thinks she's hearing voices. Ooh. Uh Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Doing great. Do you have any major mental illnesses we need to know about before we get started? Uh, no, not that I know of. All right. I reckon a bottle of Jaeger in a cheap motel room, man, and she might be all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, listen, um, I was down in Cancun two weeks ago, and uh, the only hot chicks that I saw were from, not from the U.S., or well, Mexico, 
from all over the world were hot chicks. The American chicks, man, short haired, fat, bitchy, lounging around thinking they own the place. Uh, judging all the hot chicks walking by the beach, man, just unbelievable. Oh, you know what? I love to go to Cancun and see the girls from Brazil and the girls from Colombia and the girls from Cuba. Drop dead gorgeous, man. Yeah. Hard bodies. Now, there were some hot chicks that were from, like, Iowa or something like that on uh, uh, graduation from high school, some smoking hot bodies. But most of the other American chicks, man, I was disappointed. You know? Really? Yeah, it was. The Cancun was awesome. Did all the, like the other guy, Chichen Itza, Tulum, all that stuff. But by the time, uh, you know, you want to go out and hang out down to the bars and get all these short haired women, at least 20, 30 pounds overweight, just unbelievable, man. That so. sounds pretty good to me. Tom Likis. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likis. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Hollywood, California. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Okay. Let us go to your calls here now. We're talking about oh, all the bitter, hostile, angry, chunky, not-so-hot women who get upset about all the hot chicks who go to Cancun and other spring break destinations. Is it a problem that women want to uh, gauge their hotness by going to places like Cancun? That women are worried about how their sexuality will rate against other women? We want to keep that going. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom Likas. How you doing? Okay. Dude, um, I would like to say, dude, I just went to Cancun back in December. And God, man, those girls are amazing. What were wow, they? Dude. What were they doing? Okay, most likely um, they were European because they had that accent. But dude, they would just walk up. They had that down European down. accent. Hopeless. Yes, completely topless, dude. They didn't even care. Well, and you didn't need the accent. It's the toplessness because you know in Europe, every beach is a topless beach. Well, I didn't know. I know that there was some parts of Europe that were no, no, that no, no. Every beach is a topless beach. Wow, that doesn't God, mean everybody. That doesn't mean everybody is topless. That means if you are topless, uh, nobody's going to give you a hard time. Did not know that, but let me tell you about this instance, dude. Um, it was like around three in the morning, and we we're in a hotel. This guy was. Man, this girl sounded like she was getting beat by her dad. Wow. It was crazy. Really? Yeah. Like, she was just screaming and screaming and screaming. I like, it was funny because I went outside the hallway. Like, me and my buddies were like, what the hell is that? And there was old people, probably like in their 80s or what. <laughs> they needed to call, like, the paramedics or they needed to call the, the police because it was that crazy, dude. <laughs> is that so? They, they don't even care. I don't know. It's just amazing down there. Sounds good to me. So you'd recommend it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And th especially Congo Bongo, New Year's Eve. It's, it's worth can't even describe it. Do you think that there's something wrong with women worrying about how men define their sexuality? Well, you know... Girls, they could listen to, you know, Hillary Clinton and all this other bull crap. But you know what? If you're hot, you got it. If you're not, you don't got it. Sounds good to me, David. Can you please take me out? Um, don't tase me, bro. Of course I can. Here you go. Thank you. What did I do? Get off me. Get off my face, man. Get the f*** off me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't. Wow. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello. Low. I want to get that call on the air for sure, Dean. Let's get that one on. Let's say hello here to Greg. Greg, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Oh, um, I don't disagree with how you, with when you say that if people want my crap, I can come back for more. Uh, you're mumbling. Would you say that again, please? I don't. I disagree with with how you say that. If you treat women like crap, they're going to come back for more. Well, what would you know about that? You're 16 years old. You have no idea about treating women or how they're going to react. You have no idea. But I do it in school all the time, and the most, and all I get is you're the biggest jerk I've ever met. That's great. That's the reputation you want. You have to remember also that uh, young women uh, don't like to talk to guys their own age. And so uh, you're going to get a certain amount of blowback on that, but that's okay. So, like, so, like, to what extent should I do it? Like, is there a certain point? Like, if I'm annoying the hell out of them, is that a good thing, or is that? Well, you don't. The thing is, you shouldn't be going out of your way to annoy or even talk to anybody. Okay. I mean, if they talk to you, you be a jerk. Oh, okay. But you no, don't go out of your way to harass them. What's the point? <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. All right, thanks, Tom. Uh, can you bow me up? Yes, yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number, our international number. If you're listening to us on the internet from anywhere around the world, uh, country code is one. The area code three two three, and the number five two zero sixty two eleven. That's one three two three five two zero. 6211. If you're calling from anywhere around the world, if you dial that number, you will get on the air right now, but you have to dial it now. Brandon on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. All right. Tom, I, I just got to thank you, Tom, for bringing to light such a tragedy that's going on down in these foreign countries. It is so tragic. Oh, it's tragedy, Tom. You know, maybe we should get something else going on, like maybe the... Um, for the, all the all the other girls who don't like it, maybe the the big brain blowout and a, uh, maybe a wet brain contest. <laughs> oh, it's great! It's great, Tom. <laughs> the wet brain contest, yeah. The wet brain contest, and we'll just make them feel so much better. I just think it's great that women are afraid of uh, of, of 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 whether we think they're hot enough. That's the way we want to keep it. That's right, Tom. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I like to go to a foreign country to get away from these American women, not to see more of them. Well, the ones uh, you would hope the ones who are going there are the ones who are ready to try to please you. Well, they they are because we I make it down there. We all go down there uh, as much as we can. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just get tired of seeing the American women because you know exactly what to expect from them. Yes, you do. No matter how how. How pickled they get. They are chunky, and they think that everybody's looking at them. That's exactly true, Tom. And I nobody know, you know, is. You're always on the road. Well, believe me, I've seen it. Yeah, and so have I. Well, thanks, Tom. Uh, take me out. Uh, how about uh, JFK Jr. style? Here you go, Brandon. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Amber on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hello. I <laughs> I wanted to talk. Are you to on you. a speakerphone? No, I'm not. Why does your phone sound like that? I'm in a room. No, you're on a speakerphone. You have to pick up the phone. No, I'm not on a speakerphone. If you don't pick up the phone, I'm gonna go. It's not on speaker. Yes, it is. I right, put it on speakerphone so Hold I on, can hear that. No, it's not. Uh, again, put it on speakerphone so I can hear the difference. Okay, hold on. Hello? Sounds exactly the same. That's speaker. All right, well, it sounds exactly the same, and that means you were on the speakerphone. Say what? Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joanne on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I just think, uh, and maybe I came into the show a little late, but, uh, I think it's interesting that a bunch of young guys are being told that you treat women like dirt, they come back. They do. Um, smart women 
Fessier. We're not looking for smart smart, smart women are generally not hot women. They, 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 that's one of the great things I think about evolution and Darwin. The fact is, <laughs> you can tell who the smart women are. They're the ones who aren't hot. Well, that's not true because some hot women that are smart have the whole package. But there's very few. There's it, very few of those, and a lot more of the kind I'm talking about. Those women are the exceptions to the rule, and they are rare. Yes, we are. But we're not. Oh, well, speak for yourself, dear. I see you're already past your expiration date, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You passed your uh, 30th birthday. You've already passed your expiration date. But I get hit on by 22-year-old little boys. That's all fine, because you know yeah. what? They'll take any port in a storm. No, they try hard, but they don't get anywhere. Well, I'm sure they don't. And I'm uh, again, uh, you know, there are so many women who are not like you who will get given up and who are all worried about whether we're hot for them. And then, and then uh, they're worried about whether they will please us sexually. That while you're busy going, there's plenty of other women who are doing the heavy lifting. Huh? No, seriously, you worry about pleasing yourself first. And the men will do just fine. What? You worry about pleasing yourself because a guy can get off in a wall. You worry about pleasing yourself, and a guy's going to get off. He's going to be hot. Uh, again, uh, we're not looking for somebody who's going to sit there. First of all, it is, smart women can't shut up. And the last thing we want to <laughs> the last thing we want is some woman with a trap open all the time. No, a very smart woman knows exactly when to shut up. No, no, most of them don't because they never do. Not true. It is true. No. Yeah. But hey, that's your opinion, and that's the opinion of it's the opinion show. of the vast majority of the men who listen to this program. It's amazing there aren't more people like you out there. there. It's amazing there aren't more people like me. Yeah, there are plenty of people like me. That was dripping with sarcasm. Well, darling, believe me, there are plenty of people <laughs> like me. There are plenty of men like me out there. Oh, I know. Trust me, I know. So there you go. So uh, guys all guys generally feel the way I do. So when do you decide to grow up and look for something? Darling, darling, we don't. Official. First of all, what, what you call growing up is not growing up. It's submitting to you as a bitch, which we're not going to do. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Doing what you tell us to do is not growing up. No, no, no. I don't expect anyone to do what I tell Well, that, to do when women talk about men growing up, that means when you're going to submit to me. No, so you're twisting. Things. And women like me. Women like you. Or that's what. Like that's you, what it means, haven't... darling. You're not hearing me. That's no, what hearing. it. Th I no, you're not. No, hearing, you're not. That's when a woman says that a man won't grow up. What it means is he won't do what she tells him to do. Not always. Oh yeah, that's what it means. You wonder when men are going to grow up? Guess what? We're never going to grow up. And what you call growing up, we're never going to do it if we can avoid it. Because our goal is to avoid being responsible to people like you. To people like me. Oh, right. Responsible adult women who know what they want. If you know what you want, darling, go meet another lesbian like care. yourself. And the two of you can move in together and share the household chores. But no, men have no interest not in submitting. Men have Keep no interest in submitting. Men have no interest in submitting to women like you. That's interesting. Really? What's your husband's name? I disagree. What is your husband's first name? I'm not married because I made the choice not to. Oh, be sure you did. That's what they all say. That's like all the people without money who say money isn't everything or money isn't important. <laughs> they wouldn't say that if they had money. Uh... No, your logic's twisted, but that's okay. Yeah, well, it's guess what? I'm the one down here at the radio station. You're the one calling in. So yeah, because I, I turned it on, and I was like, am I really hearing this? Yes, you are. I mean, this is a joke. I speak for hundreds of thousands of men across America. That's a sad population. Well, darling, it is what it is. So enjoy it there, living by yourself with your cats as the old Spencer you are. Enjoy that. The Tom Likas Show.